France's Macron wins re-election. Russian general announces plan to invade Moldova. U.S. Secretary General will meet Putin and Zelensky. Hello, I'm Peggy. Thank you for joining us on Funday News. It is April 25th, Monday, and here are your top stories. Emmanuel Macron won a second term as president of France, triumphing over Marine Le Pen on April 24th. The New York Times reports projections at the close of voting, which are generally reliable, showed Mr. Macron getting 58.5% of the vote to Ms. Le Pen's 41.5%. Marine Le Pen concedes defeat to President Emmanuel Macron, the first French leader to be re-elected since 2002. Media reports Ms. Le Pen is a longtime sympathizer with President Vladimir Putin of Russia. After his victory, President Macron speaking to a crown masked on the Champ de Mars in front of the twinkling Eiffel Tower and said this was a victory for a more independent France and a stronger Europe. Ms. Le Pen conceded defeat in her third attempt to become president. The New York Times said the French do not generally love their presidents and none have succeeded in being re-elected since 2002. In securing five more years in power, Mr. Macron has written an unusual achievement. The acting commander of Russia's Central Military District Brigadier General Rostam Minikiev announced at a defense industry meeting on April 22nd that Russia plans to occupy the Transnistria region of Moldova. Minikiev stated that the measure was part of Russia's second phase in its war in Ukraine, which involves establishing full control over the Donbas region and Ukrainians coast along the Black Sea to make a passage into Transnistria as part of a strategy to create a land corridor to Crimea. According to the statement, Russia plans a permanent occupation of Ukrainian territory taken in the war, which means that Russia will attack the port city of Odessa. Minakayev said, full control of Donbas and the region south of Ukraine can not only establish a channel to and from Crimea, but also affect the Black Harbor port the economic lifeline of Ukraine, so that they can no longer supply agricultural and metallurgical products to other countries from these ports. The announcement was made at the annual meeting of the Union of Defense Industry Enterprises of Russia's Sverdlovsk region. The United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres will meet Putin in Moscow and Zelensky in Kyiv separately this week. The UN announced on April 26 that the UN chief will discuss with both the foreign ministers and president of these countries the scaling up of humanitarian assistance to the people of Ukraine in hopes to talk about what can be done to bring peace to Ukraine urgently. A week ago, Guterres proposed an Easter truce but received no response from Russia. The UN chief executive will go to Moscow on April 26th and Kyiv on April 27th. In Kyiv, he will also discuss with local staff of United Nations agencies how to further provide humanitarian assistance to the Ukrainian people. UN associate spokesperson Eric Knekel said that Guterres hopes to talk about what can be done to bring peace to Ukraine urgently. He will have a working meeting with Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmytro Kuleba on April 27th and we received by President Volodymyr Zelensky on April 28th. Since Russia has the right of veto in the Security Council, the UN is questioned of its inability to stop the war. After three weeks of stringent lockdown that has fueled discontent of thousands of millions of residents, the Shanghai government insisted their goal is to achieve community zero COVID. They promised again and again that life could return to normal soon as long as people stuck to strict rules. But piece by piece go viral videos on social media revealed that the endurance of the residents in Shanghai is reaching a critical point. Out of helpless and frustration, a video was produced to tell the truth, but as usual, it was blocked by the Chinese Communist Party again. This video was filmed and edited by an account, Strawberry Fields Forever, on Weibo, who is supposed to be a Shanghai citizen. The file, titled The Voice of April, was posted on Weibo last weekend. 
The video revealed the true conditions in Shanghai, the failed promises of the government, and the frustration and helplessness of voluntary workers in Shanghai. This video was deleted immediately by the government, as usual. But netizens reposted this video as soon as the government deleted it. The Japan Coast Guard said on April 24th that 10 people on Kazoo One found in the waters and on a rock near the tip of Cape Shiridoko, Hokkaido, have been confirmed dead. The tour boat Kazoo One reported that water was flooded into the vessel around 1:15 p.m. April 23rd before it lost contact. Media reports there were 24 passengers, including two children, on board, with two crew members, and the crew said those on board were wearing life jackets. The Coast Guard continued searching for the remaining 16 people. According to media reports, the average April sea temperatures in Shiratoko National Park are just above freezing. A local fisheries cooperative said high waves and strong winds were observed in the area around noon when the boat lost contact. According to the operator Shiratoko Pleasure Cruise, the tour offers a scenic view of the western coast of the Shiratoko Peninsula. The Taipei Economic and Cultural Representative Office in Sapporo has confirmed with the Japanese Coast Guard that all 26 passengers on board were Japanese. An EU analysis revealed that Paris and Berlin sent Moscow 295 U.S. dollar million of military hardware, including bombs, rockets, and missiles that is likely being used in Ukraine. Media reports. The European Commission found that at least 10 member states exported almost 377 U.S. dollar million in military hardware to Russia, using a loophole violating an EU embargo on arms exports to Russia. Apart from Germany and France, Italy, Austria, Bulgaria, and Czech Republic were the biggest vendors. Funday News reported the loophole on April 19. It's been quite incredible, actually, the difference between 2012 and 14. Funding News reported on April 19th that an analyst for Jane's Defense revealed Germany and other EU countries have evaded the restriction of arms embargo to Russia and China under the name of dual-use items. The EU arms embargo imposed on China was in 1989 after the Tiananmen Square massacre. And the embargo on Russia was in 2014 after its annexation of Crimea. According to media reports, the loophole closed on April 8th. At the same time, China's submarine transaction with the Thai Navy failed because China could not get the German engine under the embargo. Media reports 21 German medical journals are being renamed in a push to increase gender equality in medicine. The Australian Northern Territory Education Department. Is drafting new guidelines because gendered language, such as girls and boys, isolates gender questioning or gender diverse children from classroom participation. A barber in Edinburgh, Scotland, announced that their customers can get a genderless haircut, where the prices are based on hair length, not gender. Stag Barbers in Edinburgh said they are running a gender-neutral barbers. Clients pay for length but not gender. And their staff are wearing badges with their pronouns while they are working. The Australian Northern Territory Education Department said they are looking to replace the use of the words "girls" and "boys" with gender-inclusive language such as "crew." German publisher Springer Nature said, because in the German language these professions use male-employing terms, they want to make them gender-neutral ones in a bid to help make gender equality in medicine more visible. Reuters reports on April 23rd that Taiwan will not go into a Shanghai-like lockdown to control a rise in COVID cases. The news media giant, quote, Premier Su Jinchang, is saying that the Taiwanese government was confident in the steps being taken, and it was fortunate more than 99% of cases were either asymptomatic or had mild illness. Reuters said, backed by a high vaccination rate. The government has been prompting the new Taiwan model of learning to gradually live with the virus. Reuters quotes the premier as saying, 
We will respond step by step and will not enter the state of lockdown like Shanghai. But we will not immediately stop wearing masks, and we will still take epidemic prevention measures. The Taiwanese government expects daily cases to reach 10,000 by the end of the month, and has warned the peak is likely several weeks off. Xu said more vaccines and rapid tests were on their way to help cope with the uptick in infections to prepare for the next steps in border reopening. And that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us on Fun Day News. Let's make every day a fun day. I'm Peggy, your host. I'll see you next time.